Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection November 10, 2020 Memorial of St. Leo the Great, Pope and Doctor of the Church Tuesday of the 32nd week in Ordinary Time Leo I, Pope and Doctor of the Church, ruled from the year 440 to 461. He is renamed the Great and ranks among the most illustrious sovereigns that ever sat on the throne of St. Peter. Of his life, we know little. With him the man seems to disappear before the Pope. He saw most clearly that one of his greatest tasks was to vindicate the primacy of the Roman Bishop, St. Peter's successor, and to raise the prestige of the Holy See before the entire world. Hardly any Pope in history has occupied a like position in the ecclesiastical and political world. As a writer, too, his name is famous. His sermons, which occur frequently in the Divine Office, belong to the finest and most profound in patristic literature. The Council of Chalcedon was held under his direction in the year 451. The breviary tells us Leo I, an Etruscan, ruled the church at the time when Attila, king of the Huns, who was called the Scourge of God, invaded Italy. After a siege of three years, he took, sacked and burned Aquileia, and then hurried on toward Rome. Inflamed with anger, his troops were already preparing to cross the Po, at the point where it is joined by the Mincio. Here Attila was stopped by Leo in the year 452. With God-given eloquence, the Pope persuaded him to turn back, and when the Hun was asked by his servants why, contrary to custom, he had so meekly yielded to the entreaties of a Roman bishop, he answered that he had been alarmed by a figure dressed like a priest that stood at Leo's side. This individual was holding a drawn sword and acted as if he would kill him if he advanced farther. As a result Attila retreated to Pannonia. Meanwhile, Leo returned to Rome, and was received with universal rejoicing. Some time later, the Vandal Genseric entered the city, and again Leo, by the power of his eloquence and the authority of his holy life, persuaded him to desist from atrocity and slaughter in the year 455. Leo was also active in matters liturgical. This so-called Leonine Sacramentary, a compendium of missal prayers, contains many of his compositions. Some liturgists give him credit for the beautiful offices of Advent. First reading. A reading from the letter to Titus. Titus chapter 2 verse 1 to 8 and 11 to 14. Beloved you must say what is consistent with sound doctrine, namely, that older men should be temperate, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, love, and endurance. Similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanderers, not addicted to drink, teaching what is good, so that they may train younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, chaste, good homemakers, under the control of their husbands, so that the word of God may not be discredited. Urge the younger men, similarly, to control themselves, showing yourself as a model of good deeds in every respect with integrity in your teaching, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be criticized, so that the opponent will be put to shame without anything bad to say about us. For the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 37 verse 3 to 4, 18, 23, 27 and 29 Let our response be the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and He will grant you your heart's requests. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. 
the Lord watches over the lies of the wholehearted. Their inheritance lasts forever. By the Lord are the steps of a man made firm, and he approves his way. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. The just shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Gospel Reading A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 17 verse 7 to 10. Jesus said to the apostles who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink? You may eat and drink when I am finished? Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel The Gospel today narrates the parable which is found only in Luke's Gospel, and has no parallel in the other Gospels. The parable wants to teach that our life has to be characterized by an attitude of service. It begins with three questions and at the end Jesus himself gives the answer. The Three Questions of Jesus It treats of three questions taken from daily life, and therefore, the listeners have to think each one on his own experience to give a response according to that experience. The first question which of you, with a servant plowing or minding sheep would say to him when he returned from the fields, come and have your meal at once? All will answer no. Second question would he not be more likely to say, get my supper ready. Fasten your belt and wait on me while I eat and drink. You yourself can eat and drink afterwards? All will answer yes. Certainly. Third question must he be grateful to the servant for doing what he was told? All will answer no. The way in which Jesus asks the questions, people become aware in which way he wants to orientate our thought. He wants us to be servants to one another. The Response of Jesus At the end Jesus himself draws a conclusion which was already implicit in the question so with you, when you have done all you have been told to do, say we are useless servants, we have done no more than our duty. Jesus himself has given us example when he said the Son of Man has not come to be served, but to serve. Service is a theme which Luke likes. Service represents the form in which the poor in the time of Jesus, the Anoim, were waiting for the Messiah not like a king and glorious Messiah, high priest or judge, but rather as the servant of Yahweh, announced by Isaiah. Mary, the mother of Jesus, says to the angel Behold the handmaid of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. In Nazareth, Jesus presents himself as the servant described by Isaiah. In baptism and in the transfiguration, he was confirmed by the Father who quotes the words addressed by God to the servant. Jesus asks his followers anyone who wants to be first among you must be your slave. Useless Servants This is the definition of the Christian. Paul speaks about this to the members of the community of Corinth when he writes I did the planting, Apollos did the watering but God gave growth. In this neither the planter nor the waterer counts for anything, only God who gave growth. Paul and Apollos are nothing. Only simple instruments, servants. The only one who counts is God, he alone. To serve and to be served. Here in this text, the servant serves the master and not the master the servant. 
But in the other text of Jesus the contrary is said bless those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. In truth, I tell you, he will do up his belt, sit them down at table and wait on them. In this text, the master serves the servant and not the servant the master. In the first text, Jesus spoke in the present. In the second text, Jesus is speaking in the future. This contrast is another way of saying the one who is ready to lose his life out of love for Jesus in the gospel will find it. Anyone who serves God in this present life will be served by God in the future life. How do I define my life? Do I ask myself the three questions of Jesus? Do I live, perhaps, like a useless servant? The lies of the just are in Yahweh's care, their birthright will endure forever. Yahweh guides a strong man's steps and keeps them firm, and takes pleasure in him.